What's going on ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, guardians of all ages, Joker back again once again. One of Destiny 1's strong points was its endgame, be it the raid or trials of Osiris. But the endgame wasn't just secluded to the raid or trials of Osiris. You had the gear grind, and this could run the spectrum. Are you a PvP player? Well, then you're likely trying to get a god rolled Aya Saluna or tier 12 gear. Run raids? Well, then you're likely trying to get that perfect set of raid gear that not only buffs you during raid encounters, allowing you to do more damage or take less damage when running the relic, but you're also probably trying to get gear that is appropriate for your subclass and cooldowns. Vanilla Destiny lived by the strength of the Vault of Glass. Had the Vault of Glass not been a stellar raid, I don't think Destiny 1 would have lived to see House of Wolves or Taken King or Rise of Iron. I think it would have suffered the same fate as Mass Effect Andromeda. Even if you weren't playing the Vault of Glass, you were grinding to play the Vault of Glass. Strikes, Crucible, Loot Cave, all of it was in the hope of obtaining that gear that would allow you to play the Vault of Glass. Because the carrot on the stick was the Vex Mytho class. It was Fatebringer, it was Visions of Confluence, it was Final Verdict, it was Galahorn. There was loot to grind for, and loot worth grinding for. And that's something Destiny 2 does not have. Loot worth grinding for. Once you reach level 300, what's there to do? Get to 305? There's no real difference between 300 and 305, and any difference is by degrees. It's not like light level really matters in the current endgame activities past 280. Once you're past 280, you're fine, you can do the raid. Trials gives you no advantage when you're a higher level light, so there's no reason to grind out to that 305 if you play PvP. At level 300, You've probably obtained most every piece of gear in the game outside of the endgame gear. And I hate to burst your bubble, but most of that endgame gear isn't worth your time. It doesn't make you more effective in the raid by giving you more damage or damage resistance when doing raid activities. Just like Trials gear doesn't do anything like make you temporarily faster once you respawn. There's no way to get more ammo for weapon type X, or faster reload speed on your hand cannons by grinding out gauntlets, or boots, or chest pieces. And the reality of the situation is, there's just better and easier ways to get endgame loot than doing Trials or the Raid. Public events in Destiny 2 are infinitely more easier and rewarding than the Raid and Trials. That's just a fact. You can run an entire Raid and get nothing but tokens that can only be used once you complete the Raid, which is weird because generally the point of running these early encounters, even if you can't complete the raid, is to get gear so that the next time you try to complete the raid, it's easier. And yet, you can't do that in Destiny 2, because often you get nothing but tokens, which can't be redeemed until you complete the raid. So you get this arbitrary loot currency instead of things that will help you progress that you can't use until you progress past the end game, which makes it null and void and pointless. Anyone else but me see how criminally stupid this design is? But it's more than that. Why would I care about the raid scout rifle when I already have better scout rifles and the raid scout rifle doesn't do anything in the raid? Why would I care about the raid hand cannon? I already have better hand cannons like Better Devils and Old Fashioned. Trials weapons are largely in the same boat. More often than not, you'll already have weapons that are better. Not like it really matters because Trials weapons are handed out like candy. Did you step foot in the Trials of the Nine and perform okay? Well here, have all the gear. And it's not like there's any real reason to go flawless in Destiny 2, because all that gets you is more of the same gear that you already got for playing. There's no grand prestigious reward for going to the Lighthouse. Most of Destiny 2's shortcomings seem to come down to this fear of elitism, because elitism is bad and it's evil and it allegedly creates toxicity within the communities. Instead of understanding that this will always happen, regardless of how much you make everything accessible and shower those who can't in gear and weapons simply for buying your game and existing, and just embracing that there will always be an elite, everything has been dumbed down. All the loot has been made pointless and generic, and the hardcore endgame activities are often less rewarding than things like public events. Oh yeah, unless we forget, you don't even need to complete endgame activities to get endgame loot. Join a clan, and you'll be showered in rewards for doing nothing. 
You would figure that Destiny would understand the benefit of having something elite to strive for. Because people always want to get better. They always want to get cooler stuff. They always want to have that quest, that personal goal. They want something to aspire to and for, even if it's unattainable. I spent the better part of two years playing Destiny 1 PvP, grinding for Naya Saluna. Some of my fondest memories in Destiny 1 are getting completely drunk and grinding the Black Garden with my friend for an Imago loot that I didn't even want, but he had to have. And he never got it, by the way. Some of my best friendships were made by LFGing in the early days of Trials of Osiris and sticking together as a team and losing and winning and finally making it to the lighthouse. You would figure that Bungie would understand the necessity of having something to aspire to, be it getting a god roll or getting as good as Triple Wreck or the legend himself. You may never achieve these things, but there was that road in Destiny 1. You could walk down it. You could better yourself. In Destiny 2, there's none of that. But like always, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, guardians of all ages, those are just my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below, and like always, stay frosty.